HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This segment of the news is brought to you by BTC, powered by Lime. Welcome to the Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition. Good Sunday evening, everyone. I'm LaDawn Davis. Thanks so much for joining us. Here's what's making news. Only a few hours left before the advance poll for the referendum on gaming begins. Parliamentary Registration Department officials expected to be making last-minute preparations at the two polling venues here in New Providence, the Kendall G. Isaacs Gymnasium and the College of the Bahamas, for Monday's voting exercise. Parliamentary Registration officials confirmed to us that some 6,450 Bahamians will participate in tomorrow's advanced poll. Prime Minister Perry Christie anticipates the majority of advanced pollers to take part in the referendum. He vows that this is an important process for the future of our national economy. This is a very defining moment. It's the first of its kind. We've amended the law to provide for governments in the future, consulting the people of our country. This is the first consultation we're now making where people will vote and, and for, take a position on whether or not these web shops that exist ought to be regulated and taxed, and whether or not we should make every effort to close them. That's the question. And secondly, whether or not they would like to have the establishment of a national lottery, which exists in every other Caribbean country. And the question is whether or not the Bahamians would want it here. The Prime Minister also accepts opposition to the referendum. However, he hopes that all Bahamians, once the vote is over, can get on one accord. The Methodist Church of the Turks and Caicos, Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands have indicated their opposition um, to that. And so we would expect that to be the case. But I want everyone, whether they're for it or they're against it, whether they're voting yes or they're voting no, to exercise this prerogative and privilege they have to express themselves. That's our democracy. Let's make it live. Chairman of the Bahamas Gaming Board, Dr. Andre Rollins, issued a statement today on the upcoming referendum. Dr. Rollins noted that our existing gaming legislation does not support the argument of gaming being legal or illegal. Secondly, he says we cannot permit any industry to operate outside the purview of the law and without proper regulation and oversight. Dr. Rollins indicated that if Bahamians wish to have access to gaming as a form of entertainment, it must be understood that it is unacceptable for it to continue in an unregulated manner. The gaming board chairman also believes that continuing to allow gaming houses to exist without appropriate regulatory controls creates the potential for control by criminal entities, which could produce adverse consequences. Dr. Rollins also alluded to our, nas our nation's financial regulatory regime and the reporting requirements it imposes on businesses engaged in financial services, which he says cannot be effective if it ignores a law large group of businesses which conduct significant financial transactions. Dr. Rollins further noted that the expansion of the Bahamas regulatory regime to cover gaming would create new revenue streams that would be funded by this voluntary tax. Should the majority of Bahamians vote no to both referendum questions, Dr. Rollins believes it will be an expression of the public's wish to deny Bahamians the right to participate in local gaming except as employees of hotel-based casinos. A church service marking the end of the 201st Conference of the Methodist Church of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands was held at Wesley Methodist Church on Malcolm Road this morning. Methodists convened for a week to chart the way forward. Prime Minister Perry Christie delivered the keynote address at this morning's service and reminded the Methodists that the, their tradition of being missionaries throughout the community is truly to make an impact nationwide. Today, too many of our churches are isolated from their communities and the communities that need them most. People outside this door have become familiar with the names and faces of the church leaders. And I would recommend that church leaders and members take time to continue, I think, what you're doing to walk in communities and talk to people there. 
Vice President of the Methodist Conference, Judy Monroe, reinforced the church's mandate to partner with stakeholders to infiltrate the Methodist message around the country. And we are willing and ready and able to cooperate with the government and others in the partnership to make the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands a better place for all of us to live in. Hundreds of customs officers assembled at St. Agnes Anglican Church today to celebrate International Customs Day in the Bahamas. International Customs Day is celebrated around the world on January 26th and is a special day set aside by the World Customs Organization to honor and recognize the achievements of customs officers. Minister of State for Finance Michael Halkidis says this year's theme, Innovation for Customs Officers, is a timely one and highlighted some of the accomplishments of the Customs Department throughout the years. The World Custom Organization has elected to celebrate 2013 as a year of innovation. Innovation is essential to meet the ever-changing customs environment such as global, the global supply chain, facilitating international trade, ensuring fair and efficient revenue collection, and protecting society from illicit trade, including smuggling. It is in this regard that the modernization of the Bahamas Customs Department is currently in progress, involving the development of a new Management Act, Customs Regulation, and a revised Tariff Act. Moreover, import entries and other customs forms are now being submitted electronically. There are in the Bahamas, there are currently 36 manned ports of entry throughout our family islands, many of which have been brought online. Custom controller Charles Turner encouraged parishioners of St. Agnes Anglican Church to continue to lead by example and pay their customs duties. We, the customs family, realized that St. Agnes, over being the over the hill church, and where people come into St. Agnes, what a better place to start off to do here by saying to the members of St. Agnes, we are your sons, your daughters, your sisters, your brothers. And so when you come through the airport, we would want you to put, pay your full share. <laughs> when you have the goods come in as cargo, we would also want you to pay, pay your duty. And so we want the Senegal's members to be the pay sense in ensuring that the revenue, the government revenue is paid. The Inter-American Development Bank and the government signed a technical cooperation agreement at the second annual IDB Caribbean Governors Meeting in Kingston, Jamaica on Friday. The IDB's release confirmed that the $200,000 technical cooperation grant was approved by the bank on January 10th to support the government's efforts of providing humanitarian assistance to the islands affected by the recent passage of Hurricane Sandy. Based on the assessments, Hurricane Sandy significantly affected economic activity and caused damage to public infrastructure. It illustrated estimates that show damage reached around 9% of gross domestic product, or $702.8 million. The IDB noted that approximately 1,030 homes sustained varying levels of damage, of which 10% have been, have been rendered rather uninhabitable until major repairs can be completed. IDB's assistance will support government efforts to provide humanitarian relief to the affected populations in the hardest hit islands, including the provisions of resources and materials for transport, as well as removal of debris. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, will be responsible for management and administration of those resources. When the Weekend Report, con when the weekend report continues, a plaque unveiled to commemorate a special anniversary. That story and more coming up. <laughs>